Hello friends. On the visit to my cousin, I was pleased that he gave me a very nice adenium material. It has a lovely trunk with a nice taper and curvature. My father did have some great adeniums since I was a boy, however this will be the first time I work on the species. So I'm very excited in the coming project to grow it into a bonsai. Fairly easy to dig it up as it was planted in sands and rice hulls. This is a very good mixture as it holds a lot of moisture but does not wet the roots. After that, I put the adenium in a plastic bag to prevent the fine roots from drying. Can't wait to see how its root system and do repotting work. Back to my home. Everything is now ready to examine the roots and repot the adenium. It seems to be fine being kept in the plastic bag for about one and a half days. The wheat is still green and sticks to the plant quite firmly. Here I have another adenium, also called Desert Rose, which is also a gift given to me from my aunt about one month ago, but I have done nothing on it. So today I'll work on both plants, pruning the roots and branches if necessary and give them better soil to stay indoors. I start working on the bigger one first by raking the roots with a chopstick. It's quite easy to remove the old soil. Shaking the plant, making sure most of the soil fall down and stay in the bag. And here it is. I think this adenium is planted from a cutting, since there is no taproot, but some of the surface roots are getting really coarse compared to the trunk, and they need to be corrected. You can see now more clearly after washing. Not very good root system it has, I have to say. They are fairly thick and not in a radial pattern. So what I can do now is to prune the thick root short, keeping the inner portion that points more radially. I reduce its length further as the root sticking up too high. You may want the surface roots to be horizontal or even pointing downward a little bit, so the bonsai tree will look more natural and stay firm in the soil. Similar operation is being done on the other roots. This is necessary to get a nicer flare for the plant in the future. This thick root underneath will be removed completely to make the bottom flat. There are not very much roots left. I don't think I can do better for this time. All the major roots were not in good size and position. They kind of thickening too much and curl around. Look at what remaining, it's quite awkward that the surface roots point upward and are not evenly distributed around the trunk. I'm thinking if I remove everything and plant the adenium as a cutting to develop a new root system. It is a tough decision, but I think I will do that which will be better for the long run. It is a severe root pruning for the first time working on adenium, but I hope it will survive. All the major roots are gone. The next step is to make the bottom better by removing the dome-shaped part down there. It will be a rough cut, causing a big wound at the bottom of the plant. I'd better use a knife for a nicer cut, but it's getting done and looks not very bad. Before potting, I'll apply some bonsai cut paste into the wound, hopefully the trunk will not rot away eventually. It looks better now. And next, I will put the adenium in a basin of water with some root hormone dissolved for about 20 minutes, which may encourage the new root formation, a better chance for the plant's survival. The next step is to take the smaller adenium out of the pot and do the same pruning work. This one is planted in rice hull so I don't worry about breaking the roots while pulling it up. As you can see here it has a fairly amount of fine roots, which is good. The long tap root indicates that it was grown from seed.
The adenium looks almost like a ginseng after washing. The nice thing is that it has some fine roots originating directly from the trunk, above the taproot, which can be developed into surface roots in the future. So first I will prune the taproot and see what remaining. Just like that. Not all fine roots are removed, but I think I can go a little bit higher to reduce the portion of reverse taper. And I will cut up to here. Some of the roots at the same high level are still there. I'm happy with that even though not all reverse taper part of the trunk is removed. The thickening of the surface roots in the future will gradually reduce the reverse taper and make the trunk appear more powerful. The next step is to work with the branches. This adenium has three branches or subtrunks. Whether to keep all or remove some of them depending on the overall design for the bonsai. And for this one, I want to have taper in movement for the trunk before its first division. So I'll remove two and keep only one branch for this time. Two smaller branches will be gone and let's see how it looks. I'll make an angled cut to make a transition between the different trunk diameters. I kind of like this. The trunk line will get better as it smooths out over time. Again, I'll put the smaller tree in the water dissolved with rooting hormone for about 20 minutes. Here are what I removed from the smaller adenium, one taproot and two branches. In bonsai, only surface roots that contribute to the root flare or nibari of the tree are desired. To make sure that the trees will not rot from the cuts, I'll apply some cut paste to each cut and let them settle down for some times before potting. You can use cut paste for either branch or root cut. This will prevent the infection of bacteria, support the wound healing or callousing and budding. The final step after the cut paste already settled down and a bit dry is to pot the adeniums with bonsai soil. Here are the two adeniums after root and branches pruning, one still has some roots sticking to it and one without and will be pot as a cutting. I use a fairly big training pot for the larger tree so it will have a lot of room for root growing and is developed into a medium bonsai. A layer of bonsai soil is put on top of the other with bigger particles used for drainage purpose. And I'll put the tree in at the center of the ply of the soil. Adding more soil while adjusting the tree position and orientation. A fairly large amount of soil is needed to keep the tree stay firm in the pot as there is no roots attached to it. This is also good for preventing the soil that is in contact with the trunk around the cut from drying too quickly. And it's time to give the tree a thorough watering with some rooting hormone added. I use a much smaller pot for the small adenium, as I want to train it as a mini bonsai with lot of trunk taper and movement. As the tree getting more mature, I can give it to a nicer looking bonsai pot. For now, this small deep pot is totally fine.
I'm trying to adjust the tree orientation to be more vertical and comb the roots to radial positions with a chopstick before adding soil to the pot and watering the tree. For the bigger adenium, after repotting, I notice there are three branches at the same position, and the simple thing I'll do is to remove the one that points inward. And here are the two adeniums about two weeks after repotting. The bigger one had shed off the old leaves and some new ones had grown to replace them, but nothing change observed for the smaller tree from the leaf indicator. So I hope they both survives. And that's all for today. Consider subscribe to my channel if you like the video. Thank you for your watching and I'll see you next time.